Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Monkeypox patient flees Maypen Hospital after jumping through a window. The man who was confirmed with the contagious monkeypox virus had fled the Maypen Hospital in Clarendon. Police and health authorities do not know his whereabouts. The man was under isolation. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the man jumped through a bathroom window on Saturday and left in a car that was waiting for him. The police visited his home, but he was not found. The car is being tracked. Tufton says the action was premeditated and planned. He is reminding the public that the disease is contagious and to be on the lookout, but he is urging persons not to harm the man. The solution is not to try to apprehend or engage in any confrontation with any individual having these symptoms. The best thing is to call the police or the parish health authority, he told reporters. Meanwhile, test results from a suspect case in St. James come back negative. Tufton advised the country on July 6 that the virus was detected in Jamaica. He said the man went to the public health system on July 5, having arrived on the island five days earlier from the United Kingdom. This individual has been in isolation since it was discovered that he is positive for monkeypox before fleeing the hospital. Six shot one fatally at dance in Sandy Park. Six people were shot one fatally at a party in Sandy Park, St. Catherine, on Saturday morning. The dead man has not been identified. The Constable Communications Unit, CCU, has confirmed the incident. The circumstances surrounding the incident are unclear, but reports reaching reporters are that shortly after 4 a.m., while the party was in full swing, two men from rival gangs in the era had an altercation. It is reported that the altercation developed as more men got involved and guns were eventually drawn. Following an exchange of gunfire, the six people were discovered shot. They were taken to hospital where one was pronounced dead. Efforts to speak with Senior Superintendent Marlon Nesbitt, head of the St. Andrew Central Division, proved futile up to publication time. Man shot dead minutes after woman murdered in Kingston Reprisal State Police. The police believe that a man was shot dead in Central Kingston on Saturday morning in a reprisal over the murder of a woman minutes earlier in the area. The incidents occurred sometime between 10.30 and 10.35 based on preliminary reports. Commanding Officer for the Kingston Central Police Division, Superintendent Beresford Williams, said the shooting incidents are being treated as gang-related. We are suspecting that the man being killed was a reprisal for the first, but we are not concretely sure, he said. The woman has been identified as Sandy Walker of a text lane address in the area. According to the police, Walker was on her way to a shop in the intersection of Price Lane and North Street when she was shot several times. She died on the spot. Minutes later, auto body repairman Khan Hobitorn was at a text lane home when a group of men armed with guns reported the injured and shot him. He was transported to the Kingston Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Men killed in Nannyville shootout with police identified. Two men killed in an alleged shootout with the police in Nannyville Gardens, St. Andrew on Friday have been identified. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, has also launched a probe into the incident in which two other men were injured. The deceased are 26-year-old Prince Daly and Orin Lee, 36, Indicom said in a statement on Saturday. The shooting involved officers assigned to the counter-terrorism and organized crime CTOC of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The CTOC officers were on inquiries in Nannyville Gardens when they allegedly engaged in gunfire by men exiting a vehicle in the com stated citing reports from the police. Early reports obtained by reporters said the men were traveling in a white Toyota Mark X motor car and when signaled to stop by the cops, they alighted and started shooting at the officers. The police officers responded by firing in the direction of the men. The injured men were transported to hospital where two were pronounced dead and two others are being treated, Indicom stated. Three guns were reported recovered from the scene. Indicom states it has processed the scene and collected forensics exhibit to include the three recovered firearms as well as the weapons of the officers. Vehicles that were damaged in the incident will be processed. The agency says its investigative team has received initial accounts of the incident from the police officers involved. The CTOC personnel were also served with notices to provide statements and attend the Office of the Commission to be interviewed. In the come says, its investigation is still at the earliest stage of the inquiry. It is encouraging persons to share any information regarding the incident 
by contacting the Commission's head office at 876-968-8875 or citizens can send information, photos or videos to Indicom's official WhatsApp at 876-553-5555. JFF expresses anger and sorrow over murder of junior footballer. The Jamaica Football Federation has expressed anger and sadness at the shooting death of national junior footballer Jadin Carr. Carr was among two persons shot dead by a gunman along the Lloydsville Main Road in Yellow St. Thomas on Friday afternoon. She was reportedly on her way to football training at the time of the incident. The JFF said Carr was a member of the Jamaica Under-15 team that travelled to China to participate in the Chinese Football Development Exchange Program in 2018. She was called to the Under-17 National Training Squad, played Under-15 football for St. Thomas, and was a member of the Yellas High School team, which participated in the aborted Issa schoolgirl competition in 2020. Her most recent games were played with the Proven Girls Academy in the Issa Construction 2022 Winners' Cup, the JFF said in a release. I call upon Jamaicans to stand up to this bugging monster called crime and fight against who now sees to be a passive acceptance of it, said Michael Ricketts, president of the JFF. We are losing so many young and industrious young people to gun. Jadeen did everything right and was making big strides to brighten her future when her life was snuffed out. Performed condolences to her family, friends, teammates and the St. Thomas Football Association. Please stay strong in these challenging times, Rickett said. Carr from Hartis District in Yellows was killed along with Andrew Mullins, 21-year-old taxi driver from Newlands District, also in Yellows. It is reported that about 4.45 p.m., Mullins was driving his blue 2003 Toyota Corolla along the main road with car in it as a passenger and two unidentified maids at the back seat. The police say explosions were heard and the vehicle got out of control and crashed into a great Toyota Corolla, then hit a utility pole and ended up in a gully. Two men alighted from the vehicle, and loud explosions were heard again, and then they escaped on foot in the area. Mullins, the police said, was taken to the Princess Margaret Hospital by citizens, where he was pronounced dead. The former national player was taken to Kingston Public Hospital by family members, where she was pronounced dead. 11-year-old substitute in fridge in Harborview. Residents of the coast-to-coast -coast area in Harborview were called in hurry yesterday afternoon following the grisly discovery of the body of an 11-year-old boy. Residents saw reporters that the boy's siblings were reported to playing a game and locked the 11-year-old in the fridge, where he is believed to have suffocated. Naomi Campbell tearfully accepts honorary doctorate. She is now Dr. Naomi Campbell. Supermodel Naomi Campbell has received an honorary PhD for her contributions to the fashion industry from the University of the Creative Arts in England. The 52-year-old supermodel shed tears of joy after accepting the honorary doctorate at the commencement ceremony held at the Royal Festival Hall in London on Thursday. A trailblazer who has constantly broken boundaries for black women in fashion, Campbell used her speech to demand inclusion in the industry. Everyone should be equal. Everyone is qualified, the British supermodel who has Jamaica note stated. In a sit-down interview with the BBC after the ceremony, Campbell spoke about the importance of what she said was holding the fashion industry accountable. You say you want to be inclusive. You say you want to be diverse. So let's do it, Campbell said, adding, I don't want to hear anybody saying, I want to see the action. One of the most iconic models of all time, Campbell burst onto the scene in the late 1980s. She was one of the original supermodels in the early 1990s along with Cindy Crawford, Christy Turlington, Linda Evangelista and Kate Moss. Campbell revealed last year that she had welcomed her first child at age 50. Municipalities to get $140 million for hurricane preparedness, says Mackenzie. The government will be providing $140 million for drain cleaning and other mitigation exercises for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Minister of Local Government and World Development Desmond McKenzie made the disclosure on Thursday, June 7, while addressing a disaster preparedness town hall meeting in Rocky Point, Clarendon. We are going to be making available the funds to the municipalities. We are going to be providing $140 million to shore up our state of readiness for the hurricane season, McKenzie stated. He shared the expectation that 
Once dispersed, the funds will be managed with a visible result to the end of its use. I have already met with the mayors, and they have said, there can be no excuse. We are providing the resources, and I am expecting that we will see the result of the resources that we are providing for the municipal corporations right across the country, he added. Each municipal corporation is responsible for the management of drains, gullies and roads within the parish, and carry out scheduled activities to ensure their maintenance. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.